I think my gift of of being a sister was fully understood in something that I saw visiting uh, another facility like St. Mary's called Mount St. Joseph. And I saw some very profoundly retarded people in wheelchairs, disfigured, ugly, and I saw the face of Christ in them. My life was different after that. When I sang with them and prayed with them, I said, there's something here. God is present. And I'm always knowing God more deeply in my heart and in the people I encounter. People like Susie. The charming thing about working with these people and is that they touch you and they tell right away whether you're sincere or real. And I think all humankind seeks out individuals that are going to be honest and genuine, that, that aren't afraid to love you for who you are. Um, we're so used to masks and things like that, that uh, we condition ourselves to be independent and self-sufficient. When I met Susie, it was in a kind of a low point in my life, but there was something so beautiful about Susie, her ability to, to be so positive. She wants to love and she receives love freely. I never had to ever do anything but just be a friend to Susie. We would play guitar together. Susie is someone who always shared everything she has. And uh, I, I know I've always been rather a favorite of hers because she always would say, you, you remind me of my, of my mom. She would stutter and say that to her. I said, Suze, thanks. Because I knew that if I was like a mom, then I would be okay, that I was doing what the best I could, because mother's love is very, very close to divine love. It's an unselfish and unconditional. So that was kind of a, a grace situation for me. When I look at waterfalls, I can't help but think of my own call as a daughter of St. Mary of Providence, because my founder, blessed Father Aloysius Guinella, was from northern Italy. And up in northern Italy in Como, there's gorgeous waters, fresh streams from the mountains called the Rabioso. And one of his images for our community and our mission with working with the most abandoned is to be like this fresh falling water that comes freely from the mountains that's to transmit new life, joy, simplicity of spirit, uh, provides new life, um, working with special people the mentally retarded, the most abandoned and abject in society, the most misunderstood people, deserve this fresh water and new life. And that's one of the, the mysteries of my call, to be a sister. Monica's story and art therapy was kind of an interesting situation. About a year ago, she called me a frustrated grad student who said, um, Sister Beth Ann, you don't know me, but I need to do my master's project, and I'm an art therapist. Would you give me some time? Well, I really felt that my kids were needing something special. Something was, they needed a new outlet, and I thought the Lord provided for that. And so I talked to Monica, and I said, well, tell me a little bit about art therapy. Um, I told her a lot about how we see our development disabled, and that intrigued her. So she kind of agreed for part-time working under our activity director and a social worker to kind of get a sense of some of the kids. And maybe, if it worked out, she could do her project, but it was more or less a volunteer kind of thing. Well, she began to see subtly and quietly the beauty of these kids. And with that came this idea that she was going to commit herself to to share the beauty and the um, ability of art therapy and what it does for developmentally disabled. Art for man is an aesthetic value. We in our hearts and souls want to find the beautiful, the beautiful how we see it, not how another person sees it. And art therapy is a medium which allows a person to touch their soul and to express it in paper, in film, in, in different medium, photo, photography, whatever. Monica picked out a few of our kids that she felt were really putting their whole self into their work. And it was a medium of crayon on paper. 
and we were speaking possibly of doing animation from their their feelings and their thoughts. Um, watching this progress through this year, I, I've seen that um, a couple things have happened. First of all, people like Susie, who used to be a stutterer, has grown in her ability to express her anger, her depression, her fear, especially about things like death, that would come out through her drawing. She, um, she made that comment to me once about the fact that she likes to draw because it helps her. You know, some of our mentally retarded individuals, um, like Lori, are physically imperfect. And any day you open up a magazine, you'll see that um, our society values beautiful people. Be thin, have nice teeth, if you use this deodorant, you're absolutely guaranteed promotion and love life and everything else. Lori, because she's gone through so much trauma of being rejected by, by family, having had surgery as a young person, having seizures, she's never really been in control. And the only time she was ever in control of her own life was having a job in the workshop. There's a trauma that she faces now going out into the public, emerging from her safe environment like a cocoon and taking public transportation. We've worked really hard to help her to say, it doesn't matter what other people think of you, Lori. If you love you and you know you're a good person, that's all that matters. So the trauma of having people stare at her and say, oh, isn't that woman ugly, hurts her very often because she's heard it all her life. So going out to work, we're, we're really trying to help her understand that, the, that she's beautiful and that she's beautiful to us and to God. We, the humankind, are often taken aback by the beauty of a sunset, the quiet whisper of, of the wind coming down the, the mountainside. We're taken aback by that. And sometimes we meet special people, the retarded, the disfigured retarded, the severe and profound drooling retarded, or the Down syndrome. And we say, what a mistake, how could this happen? And then we stop. If we listen and look at these things that we miss every day, the sunset and the air and the wind, the subtleness of the beauty that's there, that challenges to stop and to take notice of what is important. The challenge is to stop and take notice that you can be loved for who you are. What a frightening thing. You don't have to buy your love. You don't have to prove to people you're worth loving. That the people like you for who you are. So I think the challenge for, for us is to, to stop and take consider that, that love is unending. That it has its source from a perfect a perfect being called God that wants to touch each of us. And God sometimes uses dramatic situations such as wars to bring us on our knees. And sometimes he sends us the little daisies, those special people that genuinely and warmly hug us into love, into life. <laughs>